Hi, I'm Bob Resselman, and I'm reporting to you from Outer Edge 2023 in downtown Los Angeles, California at the Convention Center. So here at Blockchain Journal, we're interviewing Artavna Sabnis of Ultimate Digits. Artavna is the CEO and founder of the company. How are you doing today, Artavna? I'm great, Buzz. Bob, how are you? Hey, I'm great. It's been a great show. A lot of activity going on, a lot of attendees, a lot of vendors, a lot of speakers. So tell me, um, what does Ultimate Digits do? Ultimate Digits is a decentralized uh, telecom company where we give people uh, Ethereum blockchain-based phone numbers that are truly owned by them permanently. So wait, you're telling me that right now when I go to my uh, mobile carrier and I bring in my unlocked phone and I give the, they give me a SIM card with my phone number on it, I don't own that phone number? No, you're merely renting the number. The carrier owns it, they can cut you off at any time. Oh, really? So you're saying now that you're creating a way where that people can own their telephone numbers forever? Exactly. The numbers will be truly owned by them permanently. Nobody can take it away from them. They're, they're not forced to change it. Whether or not they're paying their bills, they're using it or not, that is all immaterial. The number will be theirs permanently. So then how do I get my telephone number, my personal own telephone number, how do I get it so that my carrier can use it? How do you get it so that your carrier can use it? Over here, what happens is that, um, see, you're currently renting a number from the carrier. That number is running on the typical cellular infrastructure. That infrastructure is being pledged to particular network uh, operators. When we are decentralizing telephony, what we are doing is that we are uh, renting blocks of telecom infrastructure from various ca carriers and making those blocks of infrastructure available to a vast set of consumers for them to use as they please. By doing this, we are not locking the consumers to any particular carrier, nor are the carriers getting any consumer data because we are the middle layer in between. So we are renting the infra from them in bulk and we are giving it in smaller chunks to the users based on their requirements. So what you're telling me then is that you, uh, Ultimate Digits, are going to say carrier A and saying, okay, I want to buy some of your network infrastructure and you're just buying, you're buying it in bulk and then you're turning around with that uh, network in infrastructure and you're reselling it or redistributing it to customers. Is that yeah, exactly. So we are buying bandwidth in bulk and then we are giving smaller chunks to uh, users based on their consumption. And by doing this, uh, we are the, we are the, layer of trust in between, right? The carrier doesn't require customer data. The customer doesn't have to be billed by them. None of this ma matters. Ultimately, the customer needs that when they want to make a call, send a text, use data, that service should be available to them. And we will make it available to them around the world at all points of time without tying them to any particular carrier. Okay, great. So let's, let's, let me evolve the scenario. All right, so I go out and I go to down to my, I go online, I buy an unlocked cell phone. Now, and I go to you, and I go to Ultimate Digits, and I get a telephone number, okay? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. zero. Okay, I got, so I got a telephone number, and I have, a, so I have a cell phone, I have a telephone number. Do I have a SIM card yet? I don't have a SIM card. So, so you don't require a SIM card. eSIM is anyways very commonly used. And eSIM is just electronic SIM, all the recent phones uh, supported. So we give you an Ultimate Digits eSIM. And that eSIM is taken by you via a mobile uh, application. So currently, if you use T-Mobile, for example, with T-Mobile, you can already get an eSIM by using their uh, app. So we have that same uh, feature so that you, are, you can be anywhere in the world. You, we have no stores. You don't have to come to us. Just download the application, get the eSIM installed, and ultimate digits will show up as your network carrier. Okay, so I need to get a modern cell phone. I can't use, use an old one that I got back in 2019. Mod that has eSIM? Yeah, so uh, most of the phones that have come after 2021 have eSIM anyways. And uh, typically people change a phone every two and a half years in most uh, geographies. So uh, a lot of people who are currently on the smartphone um, smartphone um, user base already have uh, phones which support eSIMs. Okay, and I just need for, uh, just so we have the uh, acronym right, what does eSIM stand for? Just an electronic SIM card. Oh, so an electronic. physical chip. Oh, an electronic SIM card. Okay, good. So there's an electronic SIM card built into the phone. Okay, great. So now we have the phone and I have the phone number and it's wired into a network. So now let's talk about billing. So where does my bill come from? Okay, so traditionally you will get the bill from your network carrier. 
the bill is computed by them based on the set of rules which they have uh, put in place. In our case, because we are a decentralized uh, telecom company, the bill is actually a smart contract that is on the blockchain, which means that the contract is fully transparent. You as a user will know what rules are there. So for for per, per minute of uh, call time, per text message, what are the charges? And because it's a blockchain-based uh, smart contract, we are giving people the ability to vote collectively to evolve these rules uh, as the network grows. Oh, great. So the smart contract is it's smart contract smart enough, obviously, to monitor my usage and also to execute a bill on a periodic basis, say every 30 days. And I receive the bill electronically. Exactly. You can receive the bill electronically. You can pay the bill with uh, cryptocurrency if you'd like or any other uh, currency. And the main thing is that because it's a smart contract, it is an immutable smart contract. So when we want to make edits to the rules, we have to uh, update the smart contract, but we don't uh, man manipulate the rules which means that there will not be billing errors and uh, so, so forth. So the chances, so it's, it's like a idiot proof bill. It cannot go wrong. The rules are very simple. They're predefined and that is how your bill will be generated. Wow, that, that's really, so this could be really transformational to the telecom industry. That what this means is I own my phone number, take it with me. And also I'm no longer, could no longer be beholden to a, 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 a centralized telecom provider. Yeah, and the other, Cool factor about this is that, uh, so you know how the US has the plus one country code, India has plus nine one, and every country has a ITU issued country code. So we have the country code plus triple nine. And your 10 digits thereafter follow that plus triple nine country code. Now the cool factor over here is that um, because it's a decentralized uh, telecommunication system where you truly own the phone number, we let you personalize the number that you want. So if you really wanted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, if you're early enough to block it, you can get it. And after you have gotten it, it is yours, right? So you have the ability to even resell it. So tomorrow, if somebody comes and makes a bid that, hey, Bob, I love your number, can I buy it from you? With a traditional network, you can't do that. They can just port it, but you don't have any economic gain from that transaction. But in this case, you can just sell the number for a profit if you wish to. So this brings to mind just some security factors, because I know at one time, telephone number is just nothing more than making a telephone call. I'd call you and you call me. But now with something like two-factor authentication, telephone numbers become really critical, improving identity. How does what you're doing address the security issues? Yeah, so security is the utmost, uh, utmost priority, right? So what happens is that um, the number which we are giving people resides in a crypto wallet that they either already have or we create for, for them. The number resides in their wallet as an Ethereum uh, NFT. Um, the way it gets uh, tracked is that uh, whichever NFT, whichever wallet holds the NFT, that wallet's owner is the number's uh, owner. Now tomorrow if you sell me your uh, number, the ownership wallet will change. It will move from your wallet to my wallet. At the time that movement uh, happens, all of these services will be temporarily paused. So you will not get any notifications, selection alerts, so, so that I'm not receiving any of your communication by, by mistake or your data. And at that point, there is a double opt-in wherein you have to go to our, our app and confirm that you have done the sale. I have to confirm I've received it. And once both of us have kind of given our opt-in, then I will start receiving the notifications which belong to me on that uh, number and you will have not, you will no longer have access to them. Great. Wow. This is uh, this is transformational. There's no question about it. It's a really interesting technology. Um, it looks like it's going to be around for a while, and it looks like you're at the forefront of making the change. Hopefully. And the other thing is that uh, what we are hoping to do is that um, currently the country code serves as an identifier. So, for example, in the U.S., a plus one country code, right? For For people who are in the U.S., it doesn't have much significance. Everybody has a plus one country code. People who don't stay in the US, in Southeast Asia, Africa and stuff, one of the reasons that Google Voice had a early uptick was because they were selling plus one virtual numbers. And people have, people have a value in owning a plus one uh, number because it's an American uh, number. Right. So now with this plus triple nine country code, which we are bringing to market, it will become like a, like a, Web3 or crypto community country code. So if you and I are exchanging numbers and either of us cites a plus triple nine number, then for that if you know, then we are in that group, you know, that you know that I'm, I'm in that circle and uh, likewise. Right, it becomes a value add. So a those, yeah. Okay, great. Well, there you have it. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. My pleasure, Bob. Thank you so much for uh, talking to me. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, happy to answer. Okay, great. And, and the company is Ultimate Digits. Ultimate Digits, and you can learn more at uh, ultimatedigits.com.
Great. Thanks for taking the time. So there you have it right here from the LA Convention Center at Outer Edge 2023. I'm Bob Resselman, and I'm with Blockchain Journal.